Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and today I'm going to be painting this um, cloudy sky with a lake, um, a distant shore, and a tree, and some flowers, pretty flowers in the, in the foreground, created by little salt effects. I'm going to keep it really, really loose, and I'm hopefully going to show you how sometimes in the middle of a painting, or quite often in the middle of a landscape painting, the painting actually looks quite ugly, quite discouraging, and a lot of people give up at that point, thinking that the painting is going nowhere. But you have to stick with it, because... Most paintings have that stage where things look bland and they don't look right. But remember, we're painting in layers a lot of the time. Even if we're painting sort of in one uh, session, we still have to build up the layers with watercolour. And we have to allow it to dry at some points and then, or get slightly drier and then add stronger paint. And then at the end, um, on top of all that loose brushwork, we can just bring it together with a little bit of dark and a little bit of detail. So I think you have to hold your nerve as a beginner and just trust that things will work out, even if you think it doesn't look very promising part way through. So I've started off my sky um, by using the wet on dry method. So it means that I'm going straight into the dry sky and not pre-wetting my paper this time. Um, there's no reason for it, it's just a matter of, of choice and it's just how I fancied painting the sky today. So I started off with really weak raw sienna, um, very watery, just to take away from the white of the paper. And now I'm putting in Payne's Grey all around it. And because I've painted most of my sky now with those two colours, leaving some sort of paler areas for clouds, it's all has become wet in wet and everything's softening and diffusing. And my board's at an angle, so I'm getting this little downward run as well. And that's looking really pretty. And um, you can see that I've brought um, a pale wash of the sky colour across the river or lake. Um, and that's so that the water can reflect the sky. Just keep it really simple using a large brush. It means just one or two brush strokes will cover that area. And when that dries, it will be just a beautiful transparent layer of grey that will just straight away give us that look of water without us having to do anything else to it. So now for the foreground and the, the ugly stage. Um, I'm using uh, raw sienna, bits of burnt sienna, Windsor blue, Payne's grey, um, and just trying to sort of build up the foreground without painting anything in particular. I'm looking for suggested detail, so something and nothing. And I'm adding a little bit of colour um, while the sky's still wet um, into the tree foliage as well. Some of that murky green that I'm mixing from those colours that I just mentioned before. So I'm painting quickly now, just using as few brush strokes as I can get away with. Um, this is a clean, um, damp brush. It's a synthetic mop brush. Um, it's an Escoda Ultimo uh, size, I think it's a size 18. Um, and I've just used it to soften back some of the foliage there. Remember, this is an undercoat, so it doesn't matter that it's looking a bit strange. Um, and also remember that the paint dries back a lot lighter. So when I'm putting in these dark shadows on each side, then they will lighten back. I can soften them back a bit, but we're really looking for contrasts with watercolour. And it's those contrasts, like the contrast here of the distant shore against the paler sky, um, is really working well there. And then there's the contrast of the branches and tree trunk against that paler sky. I will put in some darker foliage later when, when this layer is dry. But for now, I just want to position my trunk, a few branches, and just get in a few little ideas of that sort of row of bushes behind the main tree on the right. Still trying to get those sort of something and nothing details in. So I'm just looking for texture. Um, without making 
things too muddy, if you see what I mean. Getting sort of quite a few colours to sort of play together on the page. Um, but as I say, without them becoming too muddy. So the sky area is almost dry, so I can go in and strengthen up the canopies of the foliage a little bit more. Um, and so this time I'm using an Escoda Perla synthetic round brush. It's a size 14 brush. It's got a lovely point for detail, but the side of the brush or belly of the brush is great for putting in these sort of foliage, areas of foliage, which I can then finish off uh, by dropping a few darks, which will blend wet in wet with that layer now. I hope you can see what I mean about things all looking a bit disjointed, a bit weird at the moment, but we'll bring them together at the end. I'm not too happy with um, the texture at the moment. I'm trying to get in some texture um, with the palette knife, just scraping through some grasses and things like that. And I'll sort of scrape through some texture or some branches through the trees. Um, this can either reveal the white paper underneath or in this case here where the paint's still wet, uh, the paint fills the little scratch that I've made and it just gives me a fine branch, which is quite interesting. And you can see I just um, went over the foreground there um, and sort of obscured the, some of the texture that I'd made just to sort of blur that off a bit. Um, that was drawing too much attention. My focal point is the tree in the sky. So this um, foreground down on the left needs to just be a bit softer and a bit blurrier and a bit more indistinct. I'm trying to work on getting some nice dark shadows underneath. Remember, it's going to dry back a lot lighter and I'm going to put some salt into the foreground. And what that does is it pushes the paint away from each grain and gives me little flower textures. But that in itself lightens things up as well. Now, I've laid my board flat because I want it to dry in a moment. But just before I do that, I'm going to fill in um, some loose dabbing brush strokes um, with the Escoda Perla brush uh, just to build up that tree line or line of bushes behind the focal point tree. Just suggesting them with sort of calligraphic brush strokes using the tip of the brush and the side of the brush. And then again, the palette knife just to scratch through a few hints of branches, twigs, just to sort of work as a linking device to link those uh, very loose brush strokes. A little bit more into this as it dries. I think that texture's coming along quite nicely now. Everything's softening back. I'm very pleased with the sky too. So just some ordinary fine table salt, a small sprinkle across the foreground and um, that should hopefully give me some nice flowers, flower texture and grass texture and add to the texture that's already there. But I'm looking in the page, it's a little bit wet in places so I'm going to dab out some of the moisture because if I don't do that, if the salt's in a very wet area then it'll make a really weird uh, mark and I might end up with marks spreading out into the water that, that I don't want. I'm going to dab out a little bit of light in the tree line as well. Just using the tissue and just dabbing very, very lightly. I don't want to take too much paint out. But if I do, it doesn't matter. I can just let it dry and then add a little bit more paint into it. But now I'm going to leave it to dry completely. So here it is, it's dry again, and I think I've forgotten to tell you about my paper. It's Saunders Waterford cold press paper. It's 11 inches by 15 inches, or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. It's taped to my board, and my board's at an angle of about 30 degrees. Um, so now the painting's dry, I'm going to add some dry brush across the foliage in a darker green than that existing green. Uh, it's the same, made from the same colour mix. And now I'm going to add a little bit of darker paint into that and carefully graze across the texture of the paper to create these dry brush effects and just sort of darken up the foliage here and there. 
and as always it will dry back slightly lighter so if it looks a bit overly dark at the moment don't worry that will uh, just sort of fade back a little about 20 percent 30 percent lighter than it looks at the moment So it's um, at this closing stage of the painting that I'm now balancing the tones and I'm getting in some real darks under that foliage, that canopy, um, where the light is not getting through. Um, and that's really helping to sort of bring the painting together. I'll use a rigger brush and um, come over to this side and just put in a few little brush strokes that will suggest grasses, reeds on the side of the lake. Not too many, but just enough. And using that same dark colour, that in itself, uh, those sharper details of the wet on dry brush strokes, uh, the fine brush strokes, will just add that little bit of crisper detail and bring that area together a bit more and help to lead the eye across the lovely salt flowers in the foreground, across to the tree, the lake, and then up to the sky. Ultimately, this is a sky painting. The land and the water is there to support this beautiful sky, which was painted really simply right at the beginning. And now just a few finishing touches. This is a bit of raw sienna and this just um, helps to bring the painting together because there's a touch of raw sienna in the sky and in the foreground and midground. And now that I've put uh, some of that same colour just on the edges of the tree canopy, that little bit of light just is the finishing touch for the canopy and brings it together. And then, of course, with the rigger brush, just darkened up the tree trunks and brought a few more branches um, through that canopy. And these crisper brush strokes, darker brush strokes, again, is what finishes off the painting and actually brings together a very loose painting and makes the suggested detail um, look a lot more convincing. And of course, it still looks a bit scruffy, a little bit um, sort of all over the place. But once we remove the tape, um, then a clean white border will be revealed. And as I reveal it, I'm hoping you can see how suddenly uh, the painting and the scene just comes to life once we've removed the tape. Uh, I think one of the main reasons I use the tape is so I can continue my brush strokes off the page. And that's what gives this painting its life and its freshness. Because when I remove the tape, you have that look of just a, a screen grab of the whole sky, that the sky extends and the, and the trees extend beyond the picture plane. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this painting go through the awkward stage or the ugly stage. And I really hope that it will encourage you to um, press on through that stage in your own paintings. And sometimes they won't work, sometimes they don't. Every artist has a whole pile of um, unsuccessful paintings that they've learnt from. Uh, but without those unsuccessful paintings, you won't get the successes because the only way to learn is through trial and error. And it's those errors that are more helpful than the successes because there's always that little spark of something that you suddenly realise, that understanding and that growth and progress that you make each time you work out why something hasn't worked or why something has worked. And that's what, what makes learning to paint with watercolour in this loose way so exciting. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please uh, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. And both Morgana and I would really like to thank everyone that's come and joined us recently. We've had lots of new members. Um, so welcome to you and please come and join us. Follow the link below if you'd like to support Morgana or myself on Patreon. So thanks again. I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.